Well, hi there, and welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today we're continuing our celebration of the St. Patrick's holiday with more Irish stories read aloud for kids. This one is called A Wolf Story, and it comes to us from the book Ancient Legends, Mystic Charms, and Superstitions of Ireland by Lady Francesca Speranza Wilde. Transformation into wolves is a favorite subject of Irish legend, and many a wild tale is told by the peasants round the turf fire in the winter nights of strange adventures with wolves. Stories that had come down to them from their forefathers in the old times, long ago, for there are no wolves existing now in Ireland. A young farmer named Connor once missed two fine cows from his herd, and no tale or tidings could be heard of them anywhere. So he thought he would set out on a search throughout the country, and he took a stout blackthorn stick in his hand and went his way. All day he traveled for miles and miles, but never a sign of the cattle. And the evening began to grow very dark, and he was wearied and hungry and no place near to rest in, for he was in the midst of a bleak, desolate hearth with never a habitation at all in sight, except a long, low, rude shielding, a temporary hut built for the grazing animals of the field, like the den of a robber or a wild beast. But a gleam of light came from a chink between two boards, and Connor took heart and went up and knocked at the door. <laughs> it was opened, fit once by a tall, thin, gray-haired old man with keen, dark eyes. Come in, he said. You are welcome. We have been waiting for you. This is my wife. And he brought him over to the hearth, where was seated an old, thin, gray woman with long, sharp teeth and terrible, glittering eyes. You're welcome, she said. We've been waiting for you. It's time for supper. Sit down and eat with us. <laughs> now, Connor was a brave fellow, but he was a little dazed at first at the sight of this strange creature. However, as he had his stout stick with him, he thought he could make a fight for his life anyway. And in the meantime, he would rest and eat for he was both hungry and weary, and now it was as black as night, and he would never find his way home, even if he tried. So he sat down by the hearth while the old gray woman stirred the pot on the fire. But Connor felt that she was watching him all the time with her keen, sharp eyes. Then a knock came to the door, and the old man rose up and opened it. When in walked a slender, young, black wolf, who immediately went straight across the floor to an inner room, from which in a few moments came forth a dark, slender, handsome youth, who took his place at the table and looked hard at Connor with his glittering eyes. You are welcome, he said. We have waited for you. Before Connor could answer, another knock was heard. And in came a second wolf, who passed on to the inner room like the first, and soon after, another handsome youth came out and sat down to supper with them, glaring at Connor with his keen eyes. But he said no word. These are our sons, said the old man. Tell them what you want and what brought you here amongst us. For we live alone and don't care to have spies and strangers coming to our place. Then Connor told his story about how he had lost his two fine cows and had searched all day and found no trace of them. And he knew nothing of the place he was in, nor of the kindly gentleman who had asked him to supper. But if they just told him where to find his cows, he would thank them and make the best of it and get his way home at once. <laughs> then they all laughed and looked at each other. And the old hag looked more frightful than ever when she showed her long, sharp teeth. 
and this Conrad grew angry, for he was hot-tempered, and he grasped his blackthorn stick firmly in his hand and stood up and bade them open the door for him, for he would go his way, since they would give him no heed and only mocked him. Then the eldest of the young men stood up. Wait, he said, we are fierce and evil, but we never forget a kindness. Do you remember one day down in the glen, you found a poor little wolf in great agony and likely to die because a sharp thorn had pierced his side. And you gently extracted the thorn and gave him a drink and went your way, leaving him in peace and rest. <laughs> Aye, well, I do remember it, said Connor, and how the little poor beast licked my hand in gratitude. Well, said the young man, I am that wolf, and I shall help you if I can, but stay with us tonight and have no fear. So they sat down again to supper and feasted merrily, and then all oh, fell fast asleep. And Connor knew nothing more till he awoke in the morning and found himself by a large hayrick in his own field. Now surely, thought he, the adventure of last night was not all a dream, and I shall certainly find my cows when I go home, for that excellent good young wolf promised his help, and I felt certain he would not save me. But when he arrived home and looked over the yard and the stable and the field, there was no sign nor sight of the cows. So he grew very sad and dispirited. But just then, he espied in the field close by three of the most beautiful, strange cows he'd ever set eyes on. They must have strayed in, he said, from some neighbor's ground. And he took his big stick to drive them out of the gate off the field. But when he reached the gate, there stood a young black wolf watching. And when the cows tried to pass out of the gate, he fitted them <laughs> and drove them back. <laughs> and then Connor knew that his friend the wolf had kept his word. So he let the cows go quietly back to his field. And there they remained and grew to be the finest in the whole country. And their descendants are flourishing to this day. For a kind deed is never lost, but brings good luck to the doer forevermore. And as the old proverb says, blessings are won by a good deed done. <laughs> but never again did Connor find that desolate heap or that lone shielding, though he sought far and wide to return his thanks, as was due to the friendly wolves, nor did he ever again meet any of the family. And that's the end of A Wolf Story. And thanks so much for helping us continue to celebrate St. Patrick's Day here at Storytime for Kids. And until next time, <laughs> happy story time. Bye.